Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday. We uh, we started some stuff. Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah, it's snowing. Started some stuff, and then we tested some stuff, and it, <laughs> it didn't fit so well, so we redid some stuff. Uh, you'll notice, there's, there's the NBA. So I guess, um, we couldn't wait for Motown anymore. I needed a car on its wheels, so I had Brian build some dummy dummy tubes. You can see them up there. Those are those are it. So uh, yeah, we're gonna see what this thing weighs. Hasn't been sat down yet on its wheels, except for when it was on the stand. So first time it touches down is gonna be on the scales. I think it's gonna be somewhere around 1,300 pounds. Because you got 500 pounds for the for this, 500 pounds. The front chassis is about 150. By the time we got done with all the gusseting, this stuff's a solid 50. So call it 200 for the chassis. Rockers. Each of the wheels is 90 pounds with all this stuff. So 360 pounds, 800. Yeah. So I'm gonna say between 12 and 1300. What are you saying? I say 12. 12. He's going on the light side. Brandon, we do have the old fuel cell in there, which survived the 2013 explosion and served as tank for all of the first time it's testing uh despite you know it was my probably my fault they made everybody do fuel cells even though that was fine so anyway sorry guys uh, this year i had to spend darn near five grand on a bladder for the fuel cells so i guess i paid for that one too <coughs> but uh yeah so we're gonna get this uh set up and Drop it down on the scales. Yeah, I say 13. All right, moment of truth. Boom. You were closer. 1279. It's gonna be, uh, it won't be fat. It's probably gonna be, uh, I mean, we're gonna add 400 pounds and stuff from here just on cooling. And then turbo, that's 70 pounds, yeah. It might be under 2,000 dry, so that would be all right with me. The corner weights are actually ridiculously close. <laughs> so that's funny. Um, which, you know, we're not on level ground, so. We're all the way down, those are off. I believe so. Cool. Okay, back to work. Uh, today we're going to be building manifolds. Like I said, we started yesterday, and then we put the side, the side pod on. And we realized that the headers would have had to go through the side pod. So and Brian was like, put it low. I'm like, no, no, no I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to do it too close to the floor and burn the floor. Well, should have put it low because now we get to redo, uh, I don't know, probably a, few, a couple hours of work. It wasn't that bad. Moral of the, the story, always listen to Brian. Yeah, we'll see about that. <laughs> but uh, all right, back to work. A few moments later. All right, guys, coming off a pretty busy weekend for Brian and Cody, they were actually working on the headers for the mock-up engine. And one thing I kind of want to talk about because the next couple of weeks, not a couple of weeks, next couple of months are going to be all over the place. So Cody thought it would be a good idea. We should do a Pikes Peak countdown. So there's going to just be so much going on at the shop, and we're not really going to be able to work on like one consistent project at a time which is a little bit easier for video stuff. So the videos might be a little bit kind of all over the place. I know we've mentioned that before, but we want to kind of do a special event counting down to Pikes Peak. So that's what we're going to do. So currently Cody's still working on some headers over there. Connor's working on the engine cover mold over here. So let's go see what they're up to. All right, so he's made a lot of progress from over the weekend. I know he's got one mocked up over there already. How did this go? My hand is bleeding and smashed. Oh geez. It, uh, it was uh, ap after the GoPro footage, which I'm sure Mitch will cut in there, it, it went poorly the rest of the weekend. So <laughs> uh, we got one header done. Uh, there were a couple really tight runners that I was not happy about, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. So uh, otherwise, yeah, we're just moving forward. Um, just heard from RPS, they'll have the, uh, I'm looking for this, they'll have the clutch to me next week. Um, Steve will have the, the dark mock engine, right? Well, not the mock engine, the, the test meal. He's, that's ready now. So I might actually go down. Also, we have a bunch of foam ready. 
to finish up the last of the new body panels. So probably take Bud down and get an engine. I'll get all the foam. Do one big trip. Yeah. At some point this week. So keep me updated. I don't want to go this time. Yeah. Probably have to, probably have to help me strap everything down and pull over. And, oh, something blew away. <laughs> no, hopefully not. But well, I'll help out. Yes. So otherwise, yeah. Today is boring day for filming. Um, we're just welding up the other header and then. Um, Connor's finishing up the engine molds, so the engine cover molds. Once those are done, we need to pull apart because I need that on the car before I'm going to place the turbo. Which yeah, I get that. That needs to happen next. Um, that's that. Cool. Well, I know this is frustrating. You got to do what you got to do. I'll let you get to it. I know he's got a lot that he's got to do, so I'll let him get to it. And we'll check in in a bit. Services sent me a pair of air jacks, a set of air jacks, on 2015, and we ran out of time, ran out of money, never did anything with them. Um, ended up selling them to a customer of mine, so it worked out great. Uh, well, this year we're going to do something with them because not having air jacks oh. on uh, the NV 2017 was a huge pain in the butt. Cost us a lot of time, a lot of headache, so. Would you look at these? Uh, and then one of these, so these are, this is two sets. One of them is going to be for the Ultima, because that's going to have ridiculous arrow and won't be able to be jacked up. That makes sense, C for can Ah, thank you. I was like, where's the U? Oh, it might be a U. Or a U. <laughs> Good one. Well, yes. See you later. Rip. So, uh... Pretty excited about that. To get to the point now where we're gonna have the floor on, so that way we can. Uh, you can't jack. You can't put the lift under it unless you've got air jack poking through. Ooh, these are new. We got the fitting right in the top. Good job, Derek. I like it. So before we had a fitting in there and all that, which was fine. Just had to do an O-ring, but this saves us stuff. So where? I mean, where are they pretty much gonna? B. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Where are they gonna fit? Well, I caught them off guard, everyone. I mean, basically, well, yeah, basically, somewhere here. We'll find that out. Wherever we can fit it, I don't know. Okay. Honestly, I might have to do it back here. I might have to do it back. That's probably, they're probably gonna have to go back there. Literally right there, I bet because that's out of the way of everything. So then I'll do a bracket that bolts somewhere. So this sleeve here is what actually gets welded to the chassis. Okay. And I, I can cut it down, but. So I'll have to mount this thing somewhere. Uh, ooh, actually. I was gonna say, what's the distance you can get on these to kind of like, for actual jacking? I gotta be careful when we say jacking. Gotta be careful with this much pressure and stroke. So we're not supposed to dry fire these, so I'm gonna try to be careful. So yeah, I think I was asking you during all of the air compression pump, whatever. Uh, what, eight inches, 10 inches? 230 mil, so whatever that is. I think these are gonna go here. I'm gonna build a bracket that bolts to the wing supports. Uh, they're really close and far in together, but I don't care. Because really, can't put them anywhere else. Yeah. Is it gonna be fairly flat whenever you use them? Yeah. Or level? Hopefully. If not, we'll make it work. You can have a couple, guys, a couple oh, guys hold up one side of the car while it lifts itself up so it doesn't tip over. You know what sucks though is that using this thing on the lift is going to be not happy. Here's some more of that. 
You know what? I might be able to put it right there. My album is too far forward. Eh. They might still go there. See, the problem is, is I can't say these are future NBA problems because the future for the NBA is like in four weeks, if that. So that really doesn't do us good. So. I go over there. And see. We'll figure it out. What about here? Either way, it's going to be a big help and hopefully uh, yeah. try to mediate a lot of things with you guys having to deal with the lift. Uh, actually, they might go there because then we can still use the lift. That would, ooh, look at that. Actually, I think it is gonna go there. So I can, I can use a couple of these bolts and just do, uh, do a rose joint off the bolts. Oh. Boom. And then we can still do the lift under. Sweet. Derek, thank you, Derek. Uh, we're gonna do, figure out what they're doing. The front ones along here. Front ones you can't do up there because there's no room, so I think. We're gonna do them right here. Where were you thinking? Oh, right there. I'm thinking they're gonna go here and here, yeah. Cause I don't, I don't want them outside of the chassis because it's gonna mess with the airflow. And then, well, maybe, yeah. How thick is that? Ooh, it might not actually mess with the airflow. That's how wide the nose is. She said hi. I said not thick enough. Thick enough. So maybe we'll end up putting them here. Um, otherwise, I can put them just outside the seat on both sides. So I'm kind of liking that more and more, honestly. What I'll over there? Front end of the chassis, snap chassis. Love you, I see. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably do them like that. Okay. Yeah. I know you've been talking about this for a couple months when we were first going over Envy and stuff that you're like, yeah, I really uh, want to have air jacks on this time. So, thanks, Derek. Cool. Yeah, so, probably 16 of them. Oh, wow. 12. Four. Four, yeah. So, Bolt together somehow. Something like that. We'll figure huh. it out. Okay, back to welding. All right, back to welding. Again, this is a 42. So G42, 1450. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert photo right to the, I'm gonna insert photo of it next to Connor's head right here right. for previous reference. And then we can do the new one. He's, <laughs> then we'll do the new one. <laughs> he's gonna have a broken back trying to hold this thing up. I know. This alone is 35 pounds. This is also 36 pounds. So it's a 70 pound turbo. Nice. It's so crazy to think about that. And oh my gosh. You can't see it. Like, okay, hold on. Holy <laughs> that thing is massive. Next TikTok coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> you versus the guy she told you not to worry about. And if, if that's the, if that's you, you're already packing bigger than most people. But you just can't beat that. So a lot of these crazy drag cars run two of these darn things. I, well, so I was wondering, and I was curious about that. Do a lot of the what is it like? Pro mods run like twin? Is it 88? Yeah, this is an 88. Is it? That is dumb. Dude, it's uh, it's huge. That is dumb. It's huge. That is. Uh, it's so dumb and it's cool. Yeah, welcome. Stupid. Welcome to race car world. Holy. Oh, I'm gonna slide that. Thickness. Yes, exactly. Okay, we're gonna speed up the process and 
you'll see it in about three, two, one, it's complete. And there it is. We don't have enough workspace. Hold on. I know. Okay, hold on. Let's reconvene. Okay, again, G42. G GTX 5533. What he said. <laughs> there it is. My gosh, okay. Just to give you a top down comparison, obviously this one's up higher, but still. Look at that. Probably getting the. Alright, we're gonna figure out how to mock it up on the engine. So be right back.